Good evening. Tonight we're going to be looking at this scope lab, looking at JavaScript scope. And yeah, it should be a good time. So, have any questions along the way, throw them in the chat or uh, and just turn your mic on and shout. Um, I guess you don't have to shout, just talk regular volume. And uh, yeah, we'll get to them. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, uh, this lab is to look at the difference between const and let <coughs> and understand functions, I guess how functions determine scope in JavaScript. And I'm just going to open this. And remember to submit that change for that grammar. OK, so introduction. Scoobers drivers are beginning to take some notes down about their customers. Use your knowledge of scope to access and change some of these variables. So our instructions, a word of warning. In this lab, you'll practice doing some bad things. For example, we'll ask you to declare variables in global scope and write functions that break down. We do this because by testing the limits and exposing the underbelly of a language, you can better understand it and know what to avoid in the future. OK, these are our tasks. Customer name. And let's open the ID here. We can do it right here in our browser. Sweet. This will work perfect for this. So we'll open up our index.js. And let's see. Oh, I think I might have written the solution already. Did I? Did I not? Does this come with stuff that we fix, or is this completely empty? Nope, it's supposed to be completely empty. So I didn't think I had done this lab. Apparently, I have. So there we go. We'll take that back a step and start from scratch. Let's write your solution in this file. There we go. So here are our tasks. So our first task we see is customer name. Declare a variable in global scope called customer name using the var keyword. So we see var customer name. So that is technically declared. We haven't assigned it yet, but let's run learn and see what we get. All right, here's our site to go to. OK, returns the customer name. Assertion, error, expected, undefined to equal Bob. So I'm going to guess without looking at the test suite that we need to set this customer name to Bob. So let's do that. Customer name, var customer name equals <coughs> Bob. Oh, apparently. My keystrokes did something weird, but let me, huh, excuse me, let me go ahead and paste this in here. There we go, Bob. And let's save. And we see our tests are restarting, and great. Returns the customer name. So, expect window.customer name to equal Bob, and that came back true, so we are good to go. So, let's, huh. Let's see, what is this? Oh, running a single test. I haven't played around with the test runner in the browser as much as I probably should have. I've always just looked at the test, never really clicked any of them to see what they do. But um, there we go. So let's look at what our next task is. So uppercase customer name. So we see the parentheses here. So we know we're making a function, a write a function that it accesses that global customer name variable and uppercases it. So let's look at function, oh, not functions, function, uppercase customer name. And got our curly braces. And OK, so now we need to take this global and Return it uppercase. OK, so still, all right, expect Bob to equal Bob. So we're seeing in our test that we are looking for this uppercase Bob. So we have 
let's see. We don't, I don't, if we just do customer name dot, and we can call our two upper case function on it. I believe that will break because a necessary semicolon. <laughs> okay. Um, I think that'll break our first test because we're going to be changing this variable. Let's see. Okay. Well, it, it didn't break our first test, but oh, we're, we're not returning anything. So we need to explicitly return our, our uppercase customer name. So let's see that now. And that'll auto save in a second. Okay. I'm still not getting this. So let's see what's going on. Uh, expect window dot customer name to equal Bob. Uppercase customer calls the function. Expect window dot customer name to equal Bob. Okay. So we are supposed to transform that. That. So we actually need to. We wouldn't have actually changed it when we ran that first one. Now we will be destructively changing this. Let's see what our linter is saying. Do you mean to return a conditional instead of an assignment? I don't think so. I think that's exactly what we're looking to return in this case. So this will save itself in a second. And there we go. So it looks, and at first we have lowercase Bob, then it runs our function and it checks that variable again and we have uppercase Bob. So we have destructively changed that variable with that function. So now we have another function. So function set, move my mouse, best customer. And there we go. Got our little function set up now. Or a function that when called declares a variable called best customer. Okay. And best customer in global scope and assigns it to not Bob, <laughs> poor Bob. Also, for us, declaring a global variable from inside a function is one of those things we never want to do normally, but it's good for us to explore right now. So the reason we don't typically want to do this is because we want to know where our variables live. And the easiest way to keep track of that is by making sure that we're scoping them to their, their, the function or the block scope or, or where, where they're supposed to be. So by, by scoping this to this function scope, we can make sure that the variables, you know, are only alive inside that function and they're used inside that function and we know what they are and they aren't bleeding out any other place because if by accident we might be changing them somewhere. So let's set a global variable. So best customer customer. And we said that is not Bob. So we set the global by not using a let or const or var. And just like that, we have our global variable and we set it to not pop. So our test should be passing right now. Yep, there we go. Expect window.bestCustomer to equal undefined at first. And then we run our function and we expect window.bestCustomer to equal not pop. Going good. All right, what's up next? Overwrite best customer. All right, function over, oh, over, write best customer. I like leaving that extra empty line at the end. It's just something that I picked up along the way somewhere, and uh, I do it all the time now. Um, okay, so see the consequences of declaring a variable in global scope writing a new function called overwrite best customer that changes the best customer variable. So we want to change the best customer, overwrite best customer, to best customer equals um, let's say Bobby. And what are we saying here? Boom, missing semicolon. There we go. Let's see what happens. Okay. Expect a Bobby to equal maybe Bob. Okay. So I hadn't looked at the test yet. So let's get grab maybe Bob from here. 
and paste that in here. And this in browser ID automatically saves every so often. We'll see that little yellow dot will disappear because it saves. I think it actually saves when we go off the page. Okay. So overwrite best customer, expect window best customer to equal maybe Bob. Okay. Oh, it looks like this is supposed to take an argument. So this is actually not the best test because it's only checking that we change that variable and not that the function did that. So let's change that to an argument and just say, we'll call that new favorite. I think that's a good argument name for this. New favorite. And that should still pass. Okay, perfect. So now when an argument's passed in, it, it works. And I'm curious as to why that didn't break, but I'm not too worried about it at this point. This is something I noticed and wouldn't have even noticed if I hadn't have opened that test. So last thing, uh, change least favorite customer is not defined. We haven't defined this function yet, but okay. Least favorite customer and change least favorite customer. Now declare a constant in global scope called least favorite customer. So let's go to our global outside of all of our functions and we set a constant. So const least favorite customer equals, well, we'll just set it like this for now. I'm sure our test will tell us that something is failing. Um, let's see what, oh, we're, st we're still looking for this Oh, I know what's happening. So you can't initialize a, you can't declare or initialize, or you can't declare a constant variable without initializing it at the same time. You have to do that on one line. So that's something that const does that var doesn't force you to do. So that's why we were able to do that before. So here we need to initialize this as well. So let's just set this to equals, Let's say you, <laughs> um, and that will let us pass that error. It's breaking everything right now. Okay, so now we need our function and then we can see what our error message is. So function change least favorite customer. Now we should be able to see what least favorite customer is actually supposed to be equal to. Okay, so this is throwing some other things with us. Oh, let's read the rest of our read, read me. Really bad about not finishing reading the read me. Okay, so constants can be sure to assign it to some initial value. Oh, so it probably doesn't matter. Okay, now write a function called change least favorite customer that attempts to change that constant. Notice what, notice what JavaScript does when you try to change the constant. So. We want to change this. So if we say um, least favorite, well, least favorite customer equals me. So from you to me. Nope. We're probably getting an error here because attempting to override, which is a constant. And our test should, okay. And this is throwing an error. And I don't think we see it anywhere because our test runner is running it. Um, but it is throwing a type error and it's telling us that <laughs> we can't override the constant. So this is our indicator here of what's actually going to happen in our code when we try and run it doing this. And that is, I believe the scope lab. Um, Let's see, run local tests. We did that. Let's see. Let's say, let's see, learn test. Test suite. Everything's passing. Oh no, something's not connected right, right now. Saved. Let's just do learn and submit. Cool. 
Maybe I just need to refresh the page. I'm not too, too worried about it. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is the JavaScript scope lab. Any questions I can answer? All right. Well, if there's no questions this evening, thank you so much for coming out and going through this lab with me. Uh, nothing too large this evening, but yeah, thank you so much and have a good rest of your evening.